Today's video is based on integrating from 0 to infinity 1 by x to the 4 plus 1. Now, uh, you may have seen some videos on the indefinite case, but the definite case, uh, this case of the definite integral with these limits of integration is simply awesome. And it all starts off by calling the integral i and performing a t substitution where we're going from the x world to the t world by x equal to 1 by t, which implies that the x equals the negative of 1 by t squared dt. And how do the limits of integration transform in this case? Well, as x approaches 0 from the right side, that is, x has to approach 0 from values greater than 0, correct? Uh, so this implies that t will approach positive infinity. And as x will approach positive infinity, it implies that t will approach 0. So our integral becomes uh, the integral, uh, we have a negative sign here because of the differential element. Uh, the lower limit is now positive infinity and the upper limit is now 0, which looks weird and we'll deal with that in a few moments. Up here we have 1 by t squared dt and down here we have 1 by 1 to the uh, 1 by t to the fourth power. So if we switch up the uh, the order of the limits of integration we'll get the integral we'll get another negative sign which cancels out the one already there so we have a positive sign in the end. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by t squared dt divided by 1 plus 1 by t to the fourth power. And now for some trickery. For some trickery, I will multiply downstairs and upstairs by t to the fourth power. And what this does is it simplifies things a bit in that you have a t squared up top, t squared dt, and down here you have t to the fourth power plus 1 and you're integrating from 0 to positive infinity. And now it's time to pause for a moment and remember the original structure of the integral in the x world. The limits of integration are still 0 to infinity, and we were integrating with respect to x 1 by uh, 1 plus x to the fourth power. Okay, so these are just two ways to present the same integral, right? These are just two representations of the same integral. And if you look at the green integral, if you look at the green integral, we know this we can do something here. We can actually do something to make our lives a bit easier and prove an interesting result. Now, because I have exactly the same domain of integration, uh, I can name the variable whatever I want. So instead of naming this uh, the variable here t, I could just name it x. So I'm integrating from 0 to infinity, x squared dx divided by x to the fourth power plus 1. So here now, in blue and orange, are two representations of the same integral, and this is actually pretty cool, that the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared dx divided by x to the fourth power plus 1 equals the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by x to the fourth power plus 1. Integration with respect to x, of course. So this is actually a, a pretty cool result. So both these integrals represent the same, uh, both, both of these, uh, both these things represent the same integral i, right? So I can add them up. So adding them up will give me 2 times i equal to the... Now we have the integral from 0 to positive infinity of uh, x squared plus 1 divided by x to the fourth power plus 1 dx. And this is another presentation of exactly the same integral i. That is 1 half of the integral from 0 to positive infinity of x squared plus 1 divided by x to the fourth power plus 1 dx. And now we have something that we can integrate pretty easily. We can solve this pretty easily. Um, for that, again, I'm going to need to do. I need, I'm going to need to perform some more trickery here, and I could multiply upstairs and downstairs by. No, that's not. Yeah, that should work. That should work. One by x squared. I was thinking one by x to the fourth power, but no, no, not that. I need one by x squared. That will work pretty nicely. So we now have 1 half times the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 plus 1 by x squared divided by 
x squared plus 1 by x squared. So, okay, now what? Now to do something that you may have seen me try in uh, a few, in a couple of videos in the past when I was integrating trig functions. Uh, so, the trick was, the key was to recognize that your numerator, to recognize that your numerator needs to be the differential of something, right? It needs to be the differential of something, uh, the differential of some variable u. So I know what my numerator looks like. The numerator is the differential of u. So I know what my differential looks like, but I don't know what the actual substitution looks like. And for that, you can just work backwards and integrate, and you'll get x minus 1 by x equal to u. So this is the substitution that I'm after. This is the substitution that I was after anyway. Now I finally have it. And this will work very nicely. But the thing is, how to convert or relate x squared plus 1 by x squared to this substitution? Well, that's pretty simple. If you square x, uh, if you square the difference between x and its reciprocal, you'll get x squared plus 1 by x squared minus twice the product of x and 1 by x, which cancels out pretty nicely. So you have x squared plus 1 by x squared minus 2. And, okay, so what is this? This was u, so this is u squared. So that implies that this term here, x squared plus 1 by x squared equals u squared plus 2. So that, that, means, that means my integration in the u world is now the integral, and I'll get to the limits in a, in a minute. First up, uh, I know that my numerator is du, and down here I have u squared plus 2. Now, how do the limits of integration transform now? Well, uh, originally the limits of integration were zero and, 0 and infinity, right? So as x approaches 0 from the right side, x minus 1 by x will approach negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, x minus 1 by x will approach positive infinity. So your new limits of integration are negative to positive infinity. And I just remembered something that I had a factor of 1 by 2. So thankfully, I did not miss it. Because this is also useful too. This is also useful too. Given that I have an even function in u squared plus 2, I don't have to integrate from negative to positive infinity. I could just integrate from 0 to positive infinity and double the result. So the 2s cancel out. And I'm left with the... Uh, integral from 0 to infinity of du by 2 plus u squared, which is a very simple result. This is 1 by square root 2 inverse tangent of u by the square root of 2, and the limits of integration were 0 to positive infinity. So I'm going to be left here with 1 by 2 times pi by 2, and that is the result of integration. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. This definitely deserves a like and subscribe. So thank you. See you next time.